People today of non-African descent typically have between 1 and 4% Neanderthal DNA in their genomes. But why is this? And what are the positive and negative traits we inherited from our ancient human cousins, from sleep cycles to immunity? Now, anatomically modern humans, or Homo sapiens, are thought to have first appeared around 300,000 years ago, probably in Africa. But we know that Homo sapiens didn't just stick to themselves. They interbred with different archaic species of humans, such as the Denisovans and the Neanderthals, with the latter the subject of this video. But how fertile were these hybrid offsprings, and is Neanderthal DNA increasing or decreasing over time? Well, more on that later in the video. Now, we know that the Neanderthals, also pronounced Neanderthals, lived around 400,000 years ago until around 40,000 years ago. With some evidence pointing to Neanderthal and modern human lineages separating around 500,000 years ago, or perhaps a little earlier. We know that Neanderthals lived in Eurasia, and occupied a region stretching from Western Europe all the way to the Altai Mountains of Siberia in the east. Because Eurasia was their homeland, this is why modern Europeans and East Asians have the highest levels of Neanderthal DNA, ranging between 1 and 4%, but the average is around 2%. It was previously thought that Africans had essentially 0% Neanderthal DNA. A 2020 study, however, found that Africans carry more Neanderthal DNA than initially believed, at around 0.3%, and it is thought that this was due to people from Europe migrating into Africa over the past 20,000 years. But when did Neanderthals and Homo sapiens meet for the first time? Well, it seems there was multiple waves of interaction between the two with the main theory being that as Homo sapiens moved north out of Africa and into the Middle East and Europe, they mixed with their human cousins. The first major wave could have been around 100,000 years ago, but there was probably a major wave around 50,000 years ago as well, where lots of the Neanderthal ancestry we see today came from. This mixing is why modern humans have a percentage of Neanderthal DNA. Yet this DNA was passed down randomly and isn't evenly distributed. A 2014 study estimated that when you group all the Neanderthal DNA sequences within modern humans together, it adds up to around 20% of the Neanderthal genome, which is quite remarkable. It does seem, however, that the percentage of Neanderthal DNA in Eurasians has been decreasing over time over the last 50,000 years, with natural selection gradually removing Neanderthal DNA over time. This is a point noted in one of the books I read when I was researching this video, namely Dr. David Reich's book, Who We Are and How We Got Here, who is a professor of genetics at Harvard Medical School, but more on this decreasing level of Neanderthal ancestry later in the video. Yet there are many traits still associated with them that are still relevant today, but before we look at them, let's quickly look at what they actually look like. Well, they had elongated skulls with a sloping forehead, unlike modern humans who have rounder skulls. They also had prominent brow ridges and large noses, which likely was an adaptation to warm and humidified cold air in Ice Age Europe. Their faces were also more forward projecting, meaning the area around the nose and mouth jutted out more than in modern humans. Unlike modern humans as well, Neanderthals lacked a prominent chin, which is a defining feature of Homo sapiens. Neanderthals were also pretty jacked. They were extremely muscular and robust, with thick bones and powerful hands and grips. They were short and stocky, shorter than modern humans, averaging about 5 foot 4 to 5 6 for males and slightly shorter for females, but some outlier males were taller, at around 5 foot 10. Their shorter limbs and stocky build were likely adaptations to cold climates. Neanderthals also had a wider pelvis and broader rib cage than modern humans, which gave them a barrel chested appearance. It seems that Neanderthals also had a range of different skin and hair colours, from light to dark, and some it seems even had red hair. The fact that some of them had lighter skin makes sense, given that some of them lived in northern climates, with lighter skin obviously more efficient at making vitamin D. Although early depictions of Neanderthals was that they were quite primitive, it seems they were much more complex and intelligent than initially thought. We know, for instance, that they wore eagle talon jewellery, and they also created numerous pieces of art on cave walls. Our understanding of the Neanderthals has improved drastically over the last decade or so, with a Swedish scientist winning the Nobel Prize for unlocking secrets of Neanderthal DNA a few years ago. Now, what about traits they could have passed on? Well, if you're a morning person, you may have the Neanderthals to thank for it. There is increasing evidence that Neanderthals were morning people, and there was a difference between the genes of Homo sapiens versus archaic humans when it came to their circadian rhythms, 
i.e. the internal clock that regulates the sleep-wake cycle. Thus, if you are a morning person, there is a chance it's because you could have inherited some of the Neanderthal morning genes. There is more good news as well. Genes some of us inherited from the Neanderthals and the Denisovans help to boost our innate immune systems through inheritance of the toll-like receptor or TLR genes. These genes are expressed on the cell surface where they detect and respond to components of bacteria, fungi and parasites. These immune receptors are essential for eliciting inflammatory and antimicrobial responses and for activating an adaptive immune response. Other traits some of us may inherit from them are less positive, however. Remnants of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans are associated with genes affecting type 2 diabetes, Crohn's disease and lupus. Others have been associated with an increased rate of depression and allergies, as well as nicotine addiction. Another negative trait is a hand disease called Dupuytren's disease, which is characterised by fingers becoming permanently bent towards the palm in a fixed position. As this study that was published in Molecular Biology and Evolution from 2023 noted, whereas people of African ancestry are rarely affected by this disease, up to 30% of men over 60 years suffer from this condition in Northern Europe. This study went on to identify that some of the most important genetic variants that cause this disease come from the Neanderthals. Other traits that the Neanderthals are associated with are to do with physical appearance. One notable trait is the shape of some people's noses, with one study finding that a gene some people inherited from the Neanderthals increases nasal height. This trait could have been selected for over time in certain regions of the world, as it could have helped us adapt to colder climates, as longer noses may help to regulate the temperature and humidity of the air we breathe. Now if we turn our attention back to why the percentage of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans appears to be declining over time, it seems that even though Homo sapiens and Neanderthals could interbreed, the resulting hybrid offspring likely had reduced fertility, with mutations on the X chromosome partly responsible for this, as well as mutations that are in male reproductive genes in general. Furthermore, Reich argues that Neanderthal DNA is not just reduced in genes pertaining to fertility but also on the majority of genes, with far more Neanderthal ancestry and junk parts of the genome that serve little biological function than active parts. Reich notes that ancient samples of Homo sapiens from close to a major admixture period with Neanderthals around 50,000 years ago have higher levels of Neanderthal DNA than today, with natural selection reducing Neanderthal DNA over time. Early samples of Homo sapiens that his team has analysed put the level of Neanderthal ancestry at between 6 and 3%, with some outliers much higher at around 10%, compared to only on average 2% today in non-Africans. So in short, the percentage of Neanderthal DNA in modern humans has been decreasing over time, probably due to natural selection. Now there are many more traits linked to the Neanderthals that I couldn't fit into this video, so please let me know in the comments below. Now I should note that when we are speaking about events that happened 100,000 years ago, or even 50,000 years ago, there is probably much more we don't know about what was going on on this planet during these times than what we do know, and we are still quite early in understanding the secrets of the Neanderthals and their impact on us. Yet genetics and ancient DNA offers a fascinating window into our ancient past. But speaking of ancestry, why do you not descend from all of your ancestors? Well to find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.